Well, good morning and welcome. It, it went from all the chatter and the loud noise and the beautiful sound of fellowship to powerful drums and everybody got quiet. Innocent, I need you with me everywhere I go. Good morning and welcome to church. We're so glad that you're here with us as we begin celebrating the Christmas season uh, together and celebrating who Jesus Christ is. And I'm glad that each and every one of you have come to worship with us today. Church family, it's always good to see you. Thank you for being here today. To those of you who are our guests, we're so glad and honored to have you with us and worshiping with us today. We want you to feel right at home. If you have any needs, have any questions, there's any way we can help you, please let us know and we'll be glad uh, to do it. Uh, I hope that you receive the digital bulletin each and every week. It should have popped up in your inbox this morning uh, at about 8 o'clock, uh, I believe, or somewhere in that area, and it lets you know all the things that are happening in the life of our church. But if you don't, uh, then there are some QR codes scattered throughout the building. You can pull out your phone, open up the camera, scan it. It'll give you a link. It'll pop right up right there on your phone, on your device. You'll have all the information on what's happening and going on uh, in the life of our church. We also send out emails. We send a, a recap email on Thursday before the end of the week. If you don't receive those, contact the office. Uh, let us know. Our new assistant, Leslie Lane, is doing a wonderful job, doing an incredible job. She's bringing great joy, great professionalism, uh, and good hard work, quality work uh, to our office, and we're so grateful to have her. She would be happy to get a chance to meet you or talk to you on the phone, so come by, send an email, let us know what information you're not getting that you want to get, and we'll make sure uh, that you get it. One big announcement that I have uh, today is this Wednesday night, uh, December the 8th, is our last quarterly business meeting of the year. And so it was supposed to be in November, but we delayed it so we had a little more time to work through some of the details uh, of our budget, our committees, some of the things that are happening in the life of our church. And so uh, we're not only going to take care of some business and vote on some committees for next year and the budget for next year, but we're also going to celebrate what God's done and some of the things that have happened in the life of our church. So I hope that you'll join us this Wednesday night at 6.30. We're going to worship together, pray together, and then enter into a time of business session together. So it'll be good, it'll be meaningful. Uh, it'll be the last one for uh, 2021 as we look forward uh, to 2022. But I'm glad that you're here today. I'm excited to worship with you today. I want you to hear this word from God before we pray together uh, this morning. Uh, it says in Luke chapter 2, verse 8, In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields, keeping watch over the night uh, with their flocks. And an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said, Don't be afraid, for look. I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. We celebrate Jesus today because Jesus is good news. Jesus brings us great joy, and Jesus is for all people. So let's worship together with one voice, with one heart, as we focus our minds and our lives on him and ask God to speak into our hearts today that good news of great joy that's for all people. Let's pray together. Father, thank you this morning for the chance to worship. Thank you for the opportunity to celebrate Jesus. God, I'm so grateful that this Christmas season we can enjoy family and we can enjoy friends and, and food and, and fellowship and events and activities and all the wonderful things that come with celebrating Christmas. But God, in it all and through it all and above it all, at the foundation of it all, is your son Jesus Christ and the hope that we have in him. God, we want to celebrate Jesus today. God, we want to lift your name high today. Lord, open our hearts and minds to you. Speak into our lives and help us walk away today changed by the power of your spirit and the power of your grace and the power of your love. God, may you be glorified today in all that happens in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Congregation, please stand. Let's sing together, Angels We Have Heard on High.
Let's prepare our hearts to hear his word. Come to Bethlehem. Come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels see. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. works with joy surround you. All your works with joy surround you. Earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around you. Center of unbroken praise. Ever singing, march me onward. Big doors in this world of strife. Heaven's music lifts in the triumph song of life. lift up our voices and sing this new song, Christmas Day. Joy to the world on a night like no other. Emmanuel, God is with us. God is with us. Beggars and kings, let us come. And adore him, rest in his peace, and bow before him. Sing all you people, the Lord Almighty reigns. Sing every creature of God, come bless his name, for he is good. deserts and oceans the darkness was deep but never hopeless and redemption came and his name is Jesus sing all you people the Lord Almighty reigns sing every creature of God From the mountains we will shout it out for the Lord our God Almighty reigns. He is with us, He is with us now for the Lord our God Almighty reigns. From the mountains we will shout it out for the Lord our God Almighty reigns. He is with us, He is with us now for the Sing it. 
every creature of God, come bless his name. For he is good, for he is good. He has come to conquer the grave. Light of the world, the reason for Christmas. Sing all you people, the Lord Almighty reigns. Sing every creature of God. Watch this video. I kind of see part of my story like Joseph. God brought them out of something that at the beginning of the story makes no sense. Even in the middle of the story, you sometimes wonder, God, what are you doing? It's an isolated country run by a military government and under civil war for the last 60 years. I had to live in a hotel. We weren't allowed to go very many places. We were even watched and followed sometimes. I was able to get permission to live up there teaching English. So I started having this Bible study. Within a year, we had baptized believers. I knew that's where I was supposed to be. One morning I got to the school. Another friend pulls into the compound, just frantic. There were investigators. I just been kicked out of my country. I felt lost. I knew where my heart wanted to be, but I had to trust that God had a reason and I have to be okay with not knowing why. I was in a neighboring country. I was in this big city. I went to the market to buy some food. All of a sudden, I hear the language of my people. And I realized there are about a half a million of them living in my country. They come here just overwhelmed with life in the big city. I felt a lot like they were. I was a refugee. I was in a country I didn't want to be in, but I couldn't go back. Some of them found community in a local church here. And I went to the pastor of that church and asked them, what were the needs here? And after some discussion, he said, what we need is a Bible school in this city. How to share their faith, how to start a church. I don't know how to start a school, but if I need to learn a new skill, I'll learn a new skill. The first day of school, I had 50 students show up. They just kept coming and coming, with little or no sleep, just because they're hungry to learn. And at this point, they're reaching their own people. And they go to a different part of the city to share their faith with factory workers, many of whom have never heard the name of Jesus, show them love, share Christ with them, and plant the gospel seed. Reforms are happening in the country I was banned from. They have new leaders now. I've been granted entry and I'm making plans to move back again. Looking back on all this, I see that wherever God wants me to be, that's where I feel like I'm home. That's one of the probably thousands of stories that we could hear from our fellow Christians serving all over the world, taking the gospel to unreached places, living in dangerous places. But you know what I love about her testimony and her story? Okay, God, this is where I am. I didn't expect to be here, and I don't know why I'm here, but I see a need. And if I need to learn something new, I'm going to learn something new. If I need to do something different, I'm going to do something different. Because God, this is where you have me. And God, I want to help reach people with the gospel. What an incredible testimony. May God draw our hearts where we are right now. Not, not being forced out of our country. Living with all the freedoms and the luxuries that we have. 
with that same mindset that the people around us need the gospel, the hope of Jesus Christ. And that if we need to learn something new to reach them, we'll learn something new. If we need to do something different, we'll do something different. Whatever it takes. But wherever God has us, that's where he wants us to be. We have a huge opportunity to help support missionaries like her and, and, and thousands of others all over the world through the International Mission Board. And it's one of our, our greatest times of the year where we can take time to pray for our missionaries. We can take time to, to give above and beyond what we normally give to the church to help support missionaries all over the world through our Lottie Moon Christmas offering. We, we have the envelopes scattered there in the offering boxes here and in the, in the lobby. They're on the, the sound booth. They're out there on the tables uh, and the lobby. And there's prayer guides. And this week kicks off the week of prayer for international missions. And I hope that you'll take one of these, that, that you'll read these brief snippets and testimonies, and that you'll spend time praying for those all over the world who are taking the gospel uh, in places that, that we never could if we, couldn't cooper- if we didn't cooperate together. Uh, and I want you to know every, every dollar that, that you give, when you give money to the local church right here at South Hills Baptist Church, a portion of that money does get filtered all the way to the international level. And, and we give and contribute to the state level and the national level. And so we're making a difference. But every dollar, every penny of this money that comes in in December and January through our Lottie Moon Christmas offering directly supports missionaries in their place doing the ministry that God's called them to do to help reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to say thank you in advance for your giving, for your commitment to that. So we need to give and we need to pray and we need to learn from our missionaries all over the world of how we can be effective where we are uh, with the gospel. So as you give this Christmas season, please make room. Please leave some margin in your budget to give to help spread the gospel all over the world. Be sure and pick up a prayer guide. Be sure and pick up an envelope. You can give this month and next month. You'll be hearing more about that in the weeks to come. But I want to lead us in a word of prayer, asking God to bless the ministry of our missionaries all over the world. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the freedom that we have right here. Uh, in our city, in our church. And God, I'm grateful uh, that, that in some ways we're spoiled by the opportunities that we have to live out our faith and to do what you've called us to do. But God, we have, we have people who answered the call upon their life that you've given them to go to some of the most remote places of the world, to go to places they've never been, to minister to people they know nothing about. But God, that you're equipping them and you're training them and you're using them to help reach people with the message of Jesus Christ. And God, help us to pray for them. Help us to support them. Help us to see the great need that that we not only need to to share Jesus Christ across the street, but around the world. And so, Father, as we give this season, may you multiply those gifts. May it be the largest Lottie Moon Christmas offering ever in the history of Southern Baptist. And Lord, thank you for allowing us to be a part of it. Teach us and show us how we can be better missionaries right here in our city, in our neighborhoods, in our schools, among our family, among our friends, and the opportunities that you give us. All for your glory and all for your name. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church family, this time of year, the Advent season, uh, is a time between the two Advents. It is before the time when Jesus returns, but after the time he came the first time. And so we can sing the words... He has come for us, and the words, he will come for us, because both of these things are true. Let's stand together and sing together this hymn, God rest you merry gentlemen, and he has come for us. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. He will come for us, this Jesus. He's the hope for all mankind. He will come for us, the Messiah. to search 
good shepherds brought tidings of the same. How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. He will come for us this year. together, O Little Town. O Little Town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shine everlasting light the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light the hopes and fears of all Amen.
find the Old Testament book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah is full of uh, many great prophecies. And as we begin this Christmas series today, a light in the darkness. Uh, I mean, uh, a great light. Today's message is a light <clears throat> in darkness. And we're going to celebrate uh, the great light of Jesus in the midst of darkness. Uh, we're going to see and remember the promise that God made to send Jesus to rescue us from our sins over 700 years before it actually happened. You see, God sent us a redeemer. God sent a great light in the midst of darkness. And God sent Jesus to be the savior of the world. And this promise from God was to bring light and joy and hope and peace in the midst of People who were experiencing war and distress and darkness. I mean, just the very word darkness helps us to feel it. I would venture to say that many people, most people, at some point in their life was scared of the dark. And some of you still may be thought about having the lights go down and speaking about darkness this morning for a moment, but I didn't want to expose some of these grown men and their fear of the dark. But, but darkness can be a scary place, and there's something about darkness that makes us feel unsafe and uncomfortable. Except for me, when it's totally pitch black and it's cool and I'm, I'm going to bed and I'm covered up under the sheets and it's total darkness and, and cold. and like That's the only time that I really like the absolute total darkness. At any other time, darkness is uncomfortable. Darkness is disturbing. You know, in the movies and in, in the TV shows that we watch, the bad stuff usually happens in the darkness. In the dark of night, in the, in the dark alley, in the, in the dark house. And I still don't understand why the, the investigators and the FBI, when they come in on these TV shows to investigate something bad that's happened or looking for the bad person, that they just don't turn on the lights. It'd be a whole lot easier to see them. It'd be a whole lot less scary. It'd make a whole lot more sense than that little bitty flashlight on top of their gun as they're trying to sweep the house. I'm like, just turn on the light, you'll see him. Turn on the light, you'll, you'll, you'll find the dead body. It's not that hard. But darkness is an uncomfortable place to be. And God's people, the Israelites, had experienced a whole lot of darkness. Not literally, but figuratively. Their, their city had been destroyed. Their temple had been destroyed. They've lived in exile. They've suffered under the oppression of brutal kings in foreign countries. And what God's people are experiencing shows us that, that when you walk without God, you walk without hope, and you end up walking in darkness. And when you walk in darkness, you have trouble finding your way. You struggle to find joy amidst the fear and the, the confusion. And the longer and the darker it gets, the more hopeless we become. Isaiah chapter 8, just before this, describes the darkness and gloom of God's people and what they were experiencing. And they, they were seeking wisdom and, and, and occults and in other places other than God. And they were living in despair. Because their misplaced trust found them walking in darkness. But I want you to know something. I want you to, to hear something in, in, in this message today and in this series this month. That when God's involved, there's always hope. That when God is involved, there is always hope. Let's read what God's word says in the, the beginning verses of Isaiah chapter 9. And this is where we're going to be for the next three weeks leading up uh, till Christmas. Isaiah 9 beginning in verse 1. 
God's word says, nevertheless, the gloom of the distressed land will not be like that of the former times when he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will bring honor to the way of the sea, to the land east of the Jordan, and to Galilee of the nations. Listen, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. A light dawned on those living in the land of darkness. You've enlarged the nation and increased its joy. The people have rejoiced before you as they rejoice at harvest time. And as they rejoice when dividing spoils. For you've shattered their oppressive yoke and and, and the rod on their shoulders. The staff of their oppressor. Just as you did on the day of Midian. For every trampling boot uh, boot of battle and the bloodied garments of war will be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child will be born for us. A son will be given to us. And the government will be on his shoulders. He'll be named Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The dominion will be vast and its prosperity will never end. He'll reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of armies will accomplish this. God says that a great light is coming. God says that hope is on the horizon. That God has a plan and his plan is Jesus. A child, a boy, a baby. Not just a human baby, but a divine baby. And just before this, we see this promise from God in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, a couple of chapters before. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. See, the virgin will conceive, will have a son, and will name him Emmanuel, which means God with God. And then we can fast forward from this passage about 700-ish years forward. And Zechariah makes this prophecy in Luke chapter 1, verses 78 and 79. Because of our God's merciful compassion, the dawn from on high will visit us to shine on those who live in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And then later we see Jesus in his earthly ministry himself proclaim in John chapter 8 verse 12. Jesus spoke to them again. He said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness. But will have the light of life. You see, 700 years before Jesus was born. 700 years before the world changed forever God proclaimed that hope was coming to a people who were living in darkness and this was the absolute best news for people who were living in despair you see hope can show up in the most unexpected places hope can show up in the most unexpected ways hope can show up among and through the most unexpected people I preached a sermon series a Christmas series a few years ago about unexpected Christmas and how God used the unexpected people and the unexpected places and the Virgin Mary and the the stable and and the shepherds to to worship and, and all the unexpected ways that God miraculously did what he did that we celebrate at Christmas. But hope can show up in the most unexpected places, which means hope can show up in the midst of our darkness. You see, God can bring victory, even when it looks like disaster. Now, these people had been waiting in the darkness for a sign. They'd be living in the darkness and the despair of life, and they were looking for help. They were looking for hope from God. And God says, you're about to see a light. It was shocking for them, though, to hear that where this light, this hope would shine. So, so geographically, you have to go to the, to, the, to the far northern section, to the most pagan area, to the most oppressed region. And God says there, 
right there is where the people walking in darkness are going to see a great light. It's at the end of verse 1, but in the future, he will bring honor to the way of the sea, to the land east of the Jordan, and to Galilee of the nations. In the most unlikely place, under the most unlikely circumstances, God says the people walking in darkness will see a great light. It was the very area where the Assyrians, the powerful, ugly, mean, oppressive Assyrians, where their conquest began. And it's there that God promised that his light would come. And God chose there because God wanted them to see that God's greater than Assyria, God's stronger than Assyria, and that he promises, just as they've experienced grief, just as they've experienced despair of being conquered in that land and in that region and in that place, that in that very same place, they'll experience the joy and the triumph of victory at the hands of God. God shows up in the most unlikely places. And God's greatest victories often come in the darkest parts of our life. Some of the most powerful moments where God displays himself, where God pours out his grace, where God provides provision, where God provides hope, can come often in the darkest parts of our life. See, God's about to pour out his grace on his people. God's about to pour out his grace on, on all people because the Redeemer is coming. Hope is on the way, and when hope comes in the form of a great light, darkness doesn't stand a chance. Can you imagine the anticipation of God's people hearing this, living in oppression, living, struggling through, through the darkness? And God said a great light is coming. Hope is on the horizon. You see, sin had the upper hand. Sin, the disobedience, uh, the, the misguided trust, the, the blatant rebellion against God. Sin had the upper hand, and their darkness was a result of sin. Their oppression and their suffering was a result of sin. And the darkness in our world today is a result of sin. And the problem of sin goes way back beyond before the Israelites messed up, before the Israelites chose to disobey God, before the Israelites chose not to, to honor God and, and to follow God. The darkness of sin goes all the way back to the beginning. Paul reminds us of this in Romans chapter 5, verse 12. He says, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, in this way, death spread to all people because all have sinned. He's talking about Genesis chapter 3. He's talking about the Garden of Eden. He's talking about where God created a perfect world. A perfect world with no sickness. A perfect world with no anger. A perfect world with no fear. But through Adam and Eve, sin entered the world. And because of sin... Our world is broken. And God promised to send Jesus to fix it. You see, the promise of a Redeemer was news that everyone needed. The promise of the great light in the darkness was news that everyone needed. You need a Redeemer. I need a Redeemer. All of us need a Redeemer. And our Redeemer is Jesus Christ. He's the one that God promised thousands of years ago, a promise that he fulfilled with the greatest gift that humanity has ever seen. The people were walking in darkness, and God promised a great light was coming to pierce the darkness. A great light was coming to conquer our sins. A great light was coming to show us the way of hope and purpose through Jesus Christ. And the promised Redeemer gave the people something to anticipate, something to hold on to. Do you feel like you're walking in darkness? You ever felt like you're just walking and wandering in darkness? 
Maybe because you've been living without your faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, maybe your faith is in Jesus. Uh, but this tough life, this, this cruel world has gotten you down. Uh, has discouraged you. Giving this feeling of darkness. You see, in the midst of our darkness, we need something to anticipate. We need some hope to hold on to. And Jesus is our hope that we can hold on to. He is the one who can pierce our darkness. He is our great light. And darkness is all around us. Darkness is consuming us. We're living in dark days and we're walking through some dark seasons of life. All of us are living in some kind of darkness. And it may not be particularly related to your sin as it was for the Israelites here. But understand that that the darkness that we face and, and the suffering and the oppression that we face in this life is always related to the greater presence of sin that exists in our world. And we can all use some hope today. We can all use some light today. Now, I want to encourage you, church. I want you to hear me this morning. That in the darkest hours of your life, the light of Jesus can still shine bright. Don't ever forget that. That's why Jesus came. He came to bring hope. He came to bring peace. He bring to bring, came to bring comfort and strength. When we can't find it anywhere else. When we can't figure it out any other way. But in the darkest hours of your life, the light of Jesus can still shine through. I encourage you, church, to look to Jesus and find hope in your darkness. Focus on the one who promises never to leave us, never to forsake us. Fix your eyes on the one who's ready to display his power, who's prepared to pour out his grace in the midst of your darkness, because every one of us needs to hear this today. The son or the daughter who's providing care for an aging parent needs to hear this today. The person who feels invisible, who feels unseen, who feels unheard, who feels unloved by everyone around them needs to hear this today. The grandmother advocating for her grandchild needs to hear this today. The spouse fighting for hope in their marriage needs to hear this today. The wanderer looking for a place and a purpose. The teenager wrestling with his or her identity. The individual who's dealing with great disappointment needs to hear this today. That in the darkest hour of your life, the light of Jesus can still shine through. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus. Stay focused on the light. We're all overcome by some form of darkness. There's some form of darkness that's, that's oppressing us. From insecurity to apathy to a painful past or a painful present or a state of confusion or frustration or grief. We need to remember this hope today. The hope of a great light in the midst of darkness. And the good news is we don't have to wait 700 years for it like the people of Israel did. We already have it. And Jesus, Jesus has come. He's lived. He's died. He's risen again. He's risen. He's ascended back to heaven. He's sitting at the right hand of the throne of the Father advocating for you and for me. Representing us before God. Even in our sin. Even in our shame. Even in our faults and our failures. You see, as Aaron mentioned a moment ago before we sang, as, as the people of Israel anticipated the coming of the light, the coming of Jesus, 
for thousands of years beyond that now. And we anticipate it and we wait and we hope in this season of Advent for us for the promised return of Jesus when he's going to come and he's going to make it all right. He's going to see every knee bow before Jesus. He's going to see every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. But until then, we still have the powerful presence of Jesus with us right here and right now. Even in the midst of our darkness. Do not live another day without latching on to the hope of Jesus. Don't move any closer to Christmas without aligning your focus on the light of Christ. Take this moment, take this day, take this hour to confess your sins before God, to turn away from your sins and passionately pursue Jesus. Allow God's grace to break through in your life today and set you free from the guilt and the shame and the burden of sin that's, that you've been carrying around and, and the weight of that darkness. God made a promise. And I say in chapter 9, God kept his promise by sending Jesus to live and to die and to rise again, to break the stronghold of our sin, to give us eternal hope through Jesus Christ. And this promise continues to be fulfilled every day that we walk with Jesus. In the coming weeks, next week we're going to look and see how this great light of Jesus brings great joy and excitement as we see in the following verses. And then we're going to look even more in depth at, at who Jesus is as the great light. The wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. This child, the son that was born, and his reign is going to be forevermore and forevermore and forevermore. But I wanted to lay the foundation today. I want us to recognize the darkness in our life. I want us to see the reality that even in our darkest moments, even in our most difficult days, like the nation of Israel, God promises light. He promises hope. He promises help. Let me, be, let me be honest for a moment. I mean, I'm always preaching to you as your pastor, not just as a preacher or a speaker, but I want to talk to you as, as your pastor for a moment. I didn't want to preach a Christmas series this year. No, not bah humbug, he's Scrooge and doesn't like Christmas and doesn't want Christmas. I love Christmas just like the rest of you. I told you last week I've been rocking around the Christmas tree since September. I'm excited about Christmas. I love Christmas. For me, it's the most wonderful time of the year. What, but what I wanted to do, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to preach a separate Christmas series and themed series. I wanted to continue through Mark, and I wanted us to spend some time in other aspects of our worship service, reading and reflecting on the scriptures of Christmas and the passages of Christ's birth and the hope and, and the advent and singing the songs that we're singing uh, about Christmas and, and, and let that be the, the, the thrust of what we focus on this Christmas. But for some reason, for some reason, I decided a couple of weeks ago that, yeah, I guess I'm going to do a Christmas series. And I landed on these verses. And I, I still didn't really know why, and it was kind of frustrating. But here we are. We're in a Christmas series. And for some reason, the preparation for this has been a little tougher than, than normal. I, I don't know why. Not because it's a hard-to-understand passage. I give those to the guest preachers. <laughs> so when you're coming up with the next set of hard passages in Mark, as we continue Mark in the new year, just expect that there's probably going to be a guest preacher here and there. It's just easier that way. And I can just brush it off as innocence as it was conflict in my schedule, and that's just what came next. But when it comes down to it, I believe as I prepare to, to, to preach and teach God's word, that I'm called to seek the Lord to determine what his people need to hear, what our church needs to hear. And I care about your hearts. I care about your life. And when I seek the Lord, I seek the Lord to show me how he wants his word to speak into your life and to my life and to meet us right where we are. 
what I realize is I'm burdened by the darkness in our lives. I'm burdened by some of the individual darknesses that some of you are carrying and the weight that you're experiencing in your life for whatever reason. I'm burdened by, by, by the darkening and darkening world around us and all that's happening and, and going on. And that's why we're here in Isaiah chapter 9 this Christmas. And I wanted to begin with the focus on where God's people were, where the nation of Israel was in their darkness and drive home the darkness and the light and the darkness and the light. And you're going to wake up in the middle of the night frustrated you can't sleep because all you can hear Pastor Chris saying is darkness and light, darkness and light, darkness and light. I don't want to be a broken record today, but I wanted to begin where the, where the focus of, of where God's people were in their darkness, and I want you to recognize the reality of the darkness in your life, that darkness exists because sin exists, suffering exists because sin exists. Grief exists because sin exists. Loss exists because sin exists. And what I'm asking God for this Christmas, I'm asking God to break through the darkness in our world this Christmas. And I'm asking God not only to shine bright, that the great light of Jesus would shine brighter than ever before in the darkness of a world that we live in, but to shine bright in your life. To shine bright in your family. To shine bright in the midst of your circumstances. And I want us together to anticipate Jesus this Christmas. As the Israelites anticipated their coming Messiah. You see, because in the midst of their oppression, their hope was in Emmanuel. God with us. God told them, you you feel alone, you feel isolated, you feel feel cold and lost and and wandering in the dark, but don't worry. I'm sending Emmanuel, I'm sending God with us. And our hope today is in Emmanuel, God with us. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and a light has dawned on those living in the land of darkness. I'm praying today that the light would dawn in whatever darkness is hovering over your life today. I want to call us to a moment of prayer this morning, and we're going to have one more song, and Aaron's going to come, and we're, we're fixing to sing, O come, he come, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Very simply, very clean. In fact, you don't even have to sing. You can just sit there. And you can listen. You can pray. You can reflect. But but as we worship together in this song, I want you to really think about and and hear the lyric of what it's about. Think about the nation of Israel. Think about the darkness in your life. Think about the hope that you're looking for, the hope that, that you desire. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. And may the Son of God appear in your life, in your heart, in a fresh new way today. And may His light shine in the midst of our darkness. Heavenly Father, thank You. Thank You for Jesus. Thank You for a great light that you promised to shine among a people walking in darkness. God, help us to be real before you. Help us to be honest before you today.
help us to anticipate Christmas in a fresh new way. And help us to be thankful that for those of us whose faith is already in Jesus, we already have Emmanuel. God with us. And so God, as we listen to this song, as we sing this song, as however Aaron prompts us and leads us, whether we sit, whether we stand, whether we pray, whether we sing, whether we listen. May the power of your presence be felt. And may the comfort and hope and joy of your voice be heard in our hearts today. We need you, oh God. We need you more than ever before. Help us to find hope Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing. You can sit, you can stand, you can listen, you can pray, as I've said. But I want you to know I'm always available. I'm always present. If you need prayer, if, if, if you're, you're truly walking in darkness because you've never received Jesus, you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, get out of the darkness and into the light and come let me share with you the hope of Jesus Christ. And we'll pray together. You can receive Jesus. You can have your life transformed forever. Maybe you're struggling with some darkness and you need prayer, you need encouragement. Andy's here. I'm here. I'm just inviting God to shine his bright light in the midst of our darkness today as we conclude our time of worship. Let's sing. If you're ready to stand, you may do so. If you want to sit, you may do so. Let's just worship Jesus and sing this hymn. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice. your voices. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come thou wisdom. O come thou wisdom from on high. Come, desire of nations. Let's pray that he binds us together. Oh, come, desire of nations, bind all people in one heart and mind. Bid in the strife and quarrel cease. Fill the Come 
unto thee, O Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Thanks so much for joining us for our worship experience. Whether you're joining us live on Sunday morning or whether it's at another time during the week, we're so grateful that you've chosen to participate with us this week. If you want to know more uh, about what's going on in the life of our church, make sure you're receiving our digital bulletin. You can find it on our website, but you can also contact us and give us your email address and you'll receive that every Sunday morning in your inbox. You can also give online through our website. Uh, much of our giving takes place in that manner and we're so grateful to have the technology to be able to do that. And so you can find that information on our website and here on the screen as well. Uh, to our guests, thank you for being with us today. We wanna connect with you, we wanna get to know you better. We have a connection card, a guest card that's available on our website as well. Please fill that out and reach out so that we can have some information about you. We wanna get to know you better. We wanna share with you more about the life of our church. I wanna invite all of you who are joining us online to join us in person on Sunday mornings. Our small groups, our Bible study classes are meeting together at 9 a.m. in person now uh, after over a year of doing online only. And we're so grateful for that. So join us at nine o'clock on Sunday morning. There's a group, a class for you, at any age, any phase of life. And especially we want you to join us for worship at 10.30 on Sunday mornings right here uh, in our sanctuary. We're so thankful uh, for each and every one of you. We're so thankful to be able to worship together, to share God's word together, to pray together. Is there a decision that God's calling you to make? Has God spoken to you in a special way today? Maybe he's challenged you with something uh, that you need to do in your life, some areas of your life that you need to, to renew or to refocus. Uh, maybe there's a burden for some prayer needs in your life. We have a place where you can share prayer requests. And we would love to pray with you and for you for whatever it is that you need or that you want us to pray about. But most importantly, we want you to know that we want you to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I know that in my life, uh, all the years that I've followed him and served him and trying to grow in my faith and better understand who he is and better understand his purpose for my life, I can't imagine navigating the difficulty of life without a personal relationship with him. You can surrender your heart to Christ today. We would love to talk to you about what it means to follow Christ and to give your life to him. And we also want to help you get connected in ways that you can serve right here in our church, in our community. We're excited about partnering with many organizations in our community, partnering with other believers and other groups within our church to help meet the needs inside the church and outside in the community. And all that we strive to do, our purpose, our mission, our goal is helping people find and follow Jesus. So come and join us and be a part of what God is doing here at South Hills Baptist Church.